Excuse me, but what do you say when you see somebody wearing something like this? What do you say? Huh? Um, uh, thank you for your service. You're damn right. <laughs> Hold on a second, guys. I can't be mean. It's not in my nature. I couldn't stop laughing. Because, uh, sorry about that. This guy really gets, I was watching this, um, it's not about, you know, sharks, by the way. That comes later. But anyway, did you guys ever uh, see any of Cassidy Campbell's videos? He is not only a fellow YouTuber, but he's also a, fe a fellow Navy veteran. And uh, he gets it. He likes to play pranks on people and um, take them with a grain of salt. He'll go into like say a Walmart <laughs> or Target and he just starts screaming at people. He puts on like this, this uh, military drill instructor, you know, persona. And um, some of these people are, uh, they get the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> He's got a ton of other types of characters he does, but that one is, is pretty, pretty special because as I said, he gets it, all right? And so I'm watching him the other night and it just started flooding back some memories, especially my first night in boot camp. Oh my God, you guys got a minute? This is a two part video. So I'm gonna try to cram it all in the, in the one now. But uh, so my first night of boot camp was just a very memorable experience. It's 1987, all right? I'm about 80 pounds lighter, hair down to here, mistake number one. So we're at the Philly MEP station and uh, we're processing out. We get shuttled over to the airport. Everybody, like, there's about four or five in my group. We all get to say goodbye to our, you know, our sweethearts, our, our parents, uh, you know, some family friends, some close ones, whatever. And at this point, we just got a couple cocktails in us. So we get on the plane, and uh, we got to go from Philly to San Diego. I think we had one layover in between. And uh, the group I was with, oh yeah, we were putting them down. Figured it was like a last hurrah, you know, eight weeks of, you know, no partying. And plus, I was getting ready to turn 21, you know, the following month. And I would have been turning 21 in boot camp. So, anyway. Yeah, we're putting them down. I'm, I'm drinking like crazy. We're having a blast. We're staying positive. We're staying focused. You know, it's like one big joke. You know, it feels like going to summer camp, right? <laughs> Mistake number two was to drink it. And uh, that, that concept of this is going to be fun. We arrive in San Diego at late, late at night at RTC. That's a recruit training command for you uh, civilians. And by this time, we're pretty blessed. And I'm still having fun. So we arrive at the San Diego airport. They send us to this like military installation and all of a sudden some like, you know, scary character walks over to us. Are you guys all here for RTC? Uh, yeah. Follow me. So now I got the willies. He takes us outside. We get on this big white bus. There must be 30, 40 people on this bus already. We waited another 15 minutes. Here comes another group. All right. So this one kid sits next to me. Where are you from? Chicago. This kid looks so nervous. Like, very, uh, you know, timid. He said he wasn't feeling well. And uh, I'm like, dude, it's going to be fine, man. It's going to be good, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, we'll get through this. You know, maybe we'll be in the same company together, whatever. whatever. I'll look out for you. You know. We get to San Diego. It's like 10 o'clock at night. Bus pulls in, stops. All of a sudden, the doors open and some big old burly chief gets on the bus he stares right down the aisle you know 
any of you, bleep, 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 any of you, blah, 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 want to get out of my Navy, get off the bus now. This is my Navy. Freak us out. So, of course, out of all those young men, it's the kid next to me. He looks to the right, he looks to the left, and he's like, Oh man, that that chief went from zero to ten on the anger scale. He exploded. Sit your ass, man! What do you think you're doing? Blah, blah, blah. And he says, "You said we can get off. I just want to go home." <laughs> oh man, that dude blew a gasket. Right? <laughs> Needless to say, he's like, "You are home, <laughs> and you're mine." Oh man. Okay, now I'm starting to regret the cocktails. So, it was bizarre for the next two, three hours, you know, putting us in this room, getting sized up for this. You know, you get temporary uniforms for a day or two. And um, we're in this one room and they make us stand on these black squares. I could still see them. And the one guy asked, are there any musicians amongst us? Now, I really should have thought about that question a little bit more. You know, this guy's like, I play drums. This guy, I play piano. All right, me, what do you play? I play bass guitar. What, what the hell are you talking about? Oh man, they went off, all right? I didn't realize they were asking people that musicians for the Navy band, like the marching band. <laughs> God, if I only played the bugle, all right? So yeah, that was a mistake. Again, like number three or four at this point. I'm not feeling it. And I just made a, you know, an ass out of myself, the bass guitar player. Yeah, that kind of stuck with me from that point on. Moron. <laughs> Now, it's like 3 a.m. I'm hungover now. I am dead tired. I'm rethinking this whole thing. You know, these guys are mean. <laughs> so, um, next thing you know, they put us to sleep. Sleep tag. I'd say one hour later, they're waking us up. Here comes the trash cans with the baton inside it. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. Oh, my God, what a nightmare. Shell shock. There's got to be another wor word for it. So, you know, needless to say, I got through it all, you know, and um, I never got in trouble once, and I'm surprised at that. And uh, they had this little marching grinder. If you got any, in any kind of problems or, you know, that shit they called it, you got a marching party. They, they weren't fun. Now, I avoided it for eight weeks. So one day, our company commander says, uh, this person, this person, this person, this person, whatever. It was like eight or nine of us. Never had to do a marching party. So, what was our reward? He sent us to a marching party. He just wanted everybody to experience it. I about died. I could still remember that last run. We were doing like these laps, and I had a guy on the right of me, a guy on the left of me, and they were making sure that I got through it. Yeah, I was about dead. And I was in pretty good shape, you know, eight weeks later. You know, we're talking, you know, 80 pounds ago. I think I weighed like 155, 160 when I joined. And now I'm a whopping 240. You know, but then, yeah, it's like, you know, 30 years ago. You know, 1987. 87. 97, 2000. 17. 33 years ago. No. So anyway. Watching Cassidy Campbell's video, the military Navy nut screaming at these kids, it just really triggered me to share this story with you, all right? Now listen, hang tight. I'm gonna turn off and come right back. I wanna share with you probably my most treasured sentimental knife with you guys, all right? Hang tight, be right back. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. While we're on 
you know, the topic of the United States Navy. I want to tell you about two of my most treasured knives in my collection. One, very well known, is the K-Bar USN knife. I love the leather sheath because they put the US Navy stamp on it and then on the blade itself, which is still in mint condition, it's even got the USN here. Now, why did I get this? Navy vet, hello. But really, why did I get it? I had the USMC knife, you know, for a few years. And uh, I've used it, I've abused it. <laughs> well, I didn't really abuse it. But um, I loved it. So a couple years ago, when I saw that they do have the USN version, I was on. I'm, I'm, I'm right on top of it. Had to get it had to be done okay they also make one uh, for the army so if you are an army veteran get the k-bar u.s army if you're a navy vet hello marine you know what i'm saying you guys know how good this knife is for all you knife enthusiasts out there not a bad thing to say about this knife seven inch blade i i like you know the, the straight edge not the um I'm not into the serrations okay 11 and 7 8 overall clip point 1095 baby again I take good care of this one it will be passed down to my son and hopefully for generations to come but I do I'm very well aware of the other 7 inch as I said the my marine version so thank you k-bar for putting the usn stamp on this okay always take care of this now long time ago i had the ontario mk3 motto knife and uh, due to financial strain, I wound up selling. That was my personal knife. And uh, I loved it. And it's something that I, I kind of regret selling. The sentimental value was just because it was mine. All right? And I always said... If I ever get back on my feet, I'm going to replace it. I had a heck of a time. A heck of a time. But everything happens for a reason, right? I got it back. But this time, this was used and carried by a United States Navy SEAL from 2000 to 2002 in Afghanistan. This is such a solid, well-built tool. And if the sheath itself, okay, first it's got that utility clip on the top. The one I had didn't. I don't know if it was lost or what, no idea. These are kind of a joke, these like shoestring leg ties. Who cares? The sheath, this is hard plastic. It's even got that hole so like water can drip out of it. Yes, you can use this as a diving knife. It can stand the salt water. You know, the government, they got this right. They got this right. No wonder it's issued to the Navy SEALs in BUDS training. I have a ton of Navy buddies. But guess how many real Navy SEALs I know? One. Yep, my buddy Stowey. When I was serving back in the 80s, this character, you know, well, we were all out drinking. This guy worked out every single day for like two years, you know, because that was his mission. Once he was done his uh, time on our ship, he went out to budge training. Now, what did I know about the Navy SEALs? Nothing, right? And 
he stayed in contact with me. He made it. He passed. Hallelujah. These guys are like my rock stars, all right? They are unbelievable. They have the training that they go through. I would last maybe a half a day. It's the toughest, toughest course you can go through in any of the military branches. And how do I know this? Because my friend was in there. <laughs> now, I might have seen, hey, that guy's a former Navy SEAL, or that guy is a Navy SEAL. About 10 years ago, my next door neighbor, their daughter was dating one that just finished bud school. So of course I'm shaking his hand and everything. He sent me a t-shirt and all that. And um, what happened was like two years later, he was in Afghanistan and his Jeep, you know, got blown up. They like ran over a mine or something. I'm not sure of the specifics. And they about handed him his walking papers. He wasn't having it. I mean, half the guy's back is like gone. And uh, he did not want to leave. They were going to give him a medical discharge honorably. They allowed him to rehab. And he rehabbed. He rehabbed. I'm proud to say, last I heard, he's still a Navy SEAL. What's that tell you about that? He went through all that work, you know, just to get attacked. Not even two years in, uh, he wasn't having it. Nope, he got right back, <laughs> right back into it. I think he's a trainer now, last I heard. That's what I think. I have to talk to my neighbor. But anyway, so this here was carried by an official Navy SEAL from 2000, 2002 in Afghanistan. And I'm so glad it's back in my life. All right, this holds more value to me than my other one probably did. You know what I mean? Because it was just mine. And, uh, and I do hope this stays in my family for generation to generation. I could sell 90% of my knives. I always said that. I could sell 90%, but I'm keeping 10. And uh, yes, this is definitely part of that 10%, along with the K-Bar. All right? So I just really wanted to share these with you. The Navy SEALs are my heroes. You think of like the more notable ones, the more famous ones. Uh, Marcus Luttrell, um, Chris Kyle, Mike Murphy. God bless them, each and every one. Uh, I watch these real life documentaries on their training. Hey, when my buddy Stoey went through it, I was just like, yeah, it's harder than, you know, Navy training. Ah, it's harder than Marine basic. Took it, took it for granted. They, it's just, ugh. And there's so many other Navy SEALs that are that are notable. I just can't name them right now. But um, I really just wanted to share this little Navy day with you. Um, thank you so much for watching. God bless each and every one of you. And uh, keep doing what you're doing. God bless the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Navy SEALs. All right. Enjoy the rest of the day. Because I know I am. Take care, everybody.